standing firm. This is Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio Command Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Hear, Hear from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Friday, the 28th day of September 2018. I trust that everyone had a wonderful evening. Uh, We want to extend our condolences to all of those families who have lost uh, loved ones during the past uh, weeks, past days uh, as well. And uh, we trust that your faith and uh, your memories of your loved ones will help you uh, through these very, very difficult Times. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the Record is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on a local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Dorit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There's always someone there waiting to take your calls, and you know what comes next. Normally, it is that beautiful voice of Miss. Radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll free number provided courtesy of Flow. That toll free number is 1 800 534 8255. You can also call us at 949 8037 and 949 6990. Of course, if you don't like to talk on the telephone, you can email us at For the Record. That is one word for the record at CANDW dot KY. We also have a WhatsApp number, that WhatsApp number, 925-3261, where we welcome you and encourage you to leave us a voice note or send us a text message, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show. And of course, we have, we're on YouTube as well. You can follow us by subscribing to Radio Cayman uh, live stream as well. So no excuses whatsoever for not being able to contact us to join in the conversation if you want to. We just simply ask that when you do call to join in the conversation, you want to also be um, aware, um, cognizant of other people's desire to talk as well and to limit your time. We don't no, normally don't have a time limit. Uh, we just ask you to be use your own discretion uh, in that regard as well. Uh, before I introduce my guest uh, this morning, I want to say a um, uh, uh, big shout out, a happy birthday to Akela. And for those of you who don't know who Akela is, if you know Miss Tit Tit, that is Akela. And if you don't know Akela, and if you don't know, don't know who Miss Tit Tit is, then it is Miss Tierline Wellington. And uh, she is 90 years of age today, her birthday. Many of you youngsters, especially um, not just youngsters, men of men will know her if you were brought up in the scouting fraternity. She has been a scout leader from way back. Those old people who say God knows when. And... Uh, she is 90 years old, 
still on the go, still has all of her mental faculties and uh, everything else, and I want to wish her a happy birthday. But we want to hear from someone who has worked very closely with uh, Miss Tit-Tit, with Akela. And we have on the phone with us this morning the Executive Director of the Cayman Islands Scout Association, Mr. Winston Hale. Mr. Hale, good morning, sir. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, pleasant good morning to you, um, Chief Commissioner O.C. and host of For the Record. <laughs> yes, I, I guess I should have declared my interest, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. Tell, tell us about, uh, tell us about Miss, uh, Miss Tit-Tit. Well-loved, uh, uh, many people, pe- uh, persons like Antonio Hawkins, uh, Rupert McCoy, uh, Wilfred Connolly, um, Mark Scotland, so many of them came up under the tutelage of uh, Miss Tit-Tit. And you're so correct there, O.C., that there's a long list, a very lengthy list of individuals whose lives have been greatly impacted by this wonderful, full, wonderful lady. And by so doing, have established their niche in this community and have been contributing significantly to Cayman's development. So that um, we are very, very proud to be associated with um, Kiela, Ms. Tiffith, Akalia, affectionately known as Akalia, who has given some 70 years of service to the Scout movement. You know, um, it's unbelievable. Her love for this community and her love for people from all walks of life knows no bounds. And as a result of that, she has given so much of herself, sacrificially, to the movement in advancing its cause and has reached a long list of individuals, a long list of young men, like I said earlier, who have now taken their rightful place in this community. Can can you, uh, Mr. Hale, can you tell our listening and viewing audience, those who don't know what the scout movement is all about, um, not for, are that familiar with it, the adoption of the name Akela, the reason for it. Akela, the name Akela, A-K-E-L-I-A, is taken from the jungle story written by Rudyard Kipling. When Lord Baden Powell established the scout movement, he thought that the jungle story would form a very wonderful backdrop for the Cub Scout section. You know, scouting was started in 1907, and several years after, Cub Scouting was started as an offshoot. So he wanted a, a sort of backdrop that would reflect the boys in a group called a pack, just like the Wolf Pack mm-hmm. in the Jungle Story, and Mowgli, the little boy who was found by the pack of wolves, would represent the youngsters within that pack. Mm-hmm. And then Akalia was the leader of the pack who provided protection and guidance and direction for the boys in the pack. Hence the affectionate name Akalia, which is in fact international. But our local Akalia is veteran sculptor Theodine Wellington. Yeah. One, one of the things that uh, we have been able to realize uh, during um, uh, Ms. Tit's uh, tenure is that we now have uh, a dedicated scout headquarters, and that takes us back from a long, long time when we had uh, Dobson Hall that had been established uh, for that purpose by uh, Mr. Mr. Dobson. And uh, we, we're so happy that both she and uh, Ms. Clark have uh, been able to uh, to witness the construction and the fact that we have now occupied our new headquarters after She's so correct. many years. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, it's one of those achievements that we can be justifiably be proud of. Not just the scouting fraternity, but all of Cayman. Matter of fact, if I may say so, our headquarters is just about one of the best we have within the region. And um, we are really very grateful for, um, to all the, all the agencies, companies, 
And in particular, I'm going to get in trouble for this. <laughs> Mr. Charles Jennings, who has masterminded all of this operation, the whole thing of the fundraising drive, the whole thing of ensuring that construction go through, even we're having mm -hmm. challenges in finding the necessary, fund, the necessary funds to go through with it. You always find a way, and we are eternally grateful to Charles. As well as well as our, our, our other donors, like the All Foundation, uh, the DART, uh, Cayman Islands government, um, as well um, one of uh, f uh, several financial institutions, also uh, many. Of course, when we start naming them, we r run the risk of forgetting. But uh, we still have a formal ceremony that we will be going through and uh, acknowledging and thanking everyone for for their assistance as well. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> but early, early, you will ask for me to say something about the movement other than what I stated. Just to state, for those who might not know, that scouting is a uniform youth organization. It's international. We number internationally to date some 45, 50 million young people across the globe. Um, here in the Cayman Islands, the movement is alive and well and is growing. And so, um, matter of fact, this September, we are into recruiting mode. So we are looking to recruit youngsters between the ages of 6 to 19. 6 to 19, that's the range. Or Beaver Scouts, their age go from 6 to 8. Cub Scouts, 8 to 11. Scouts, 11 to 16. And 16 up to 19, we have our... Venture Scout, by which age, by which age, if the youngsters continue through the program, he should have completed what we call the Queen Scout Award, which is equivalent to what they call the um, Eagle Scout Award in the United States. Same thing. Okay. Oh, by the way, talking about uh, uh, badges and stuff, uh, expect a call from um, a lady who has a grand uh, son in... I think it's uh, possibly Texas, but he's involved in the uh, scouting movement in, uh, in the United States, and uh, she is going to be contacting you in relation to uh, her last name, Mrs. Chisholm, and she will be contacting you in relation to badges uh, with a distinct Cayman flavor to it as well. Wonderful. I just wanted to remind you of that. Vincent, I want to thank you very much. Uh, again, I want to say a big happy birthday to uh, Akela, Miss Tit Tit, Miss Tealine Wellington, we wish her well and we wish her that she, we hope and we trust that she will live to see many, many, many more. Winston, thank you very much. We're going to go to commercial break. Uh, when we uh, allow me the opportunity to, uh, to share Chief O.C. <laughs> and happy birthday to you, Akela. Thank you very much, uh, Winston. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, I will introduce my Special guest, a big surprise guest this morning um, as well. And uh, so don't change that dial. Please stay tuned. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands. He had founded it upon the seas. The first Cayman Education Act was pushed through the legislature in 1902, but not without much controversy. For several decades, Britain was keen to impose compulsory free education, however was met with resistance, namely by the Presbyterian Church, which sought to retain control over the material that was taught. Other factors which delayed the enactment of legislature included that many did not believe a developed education system was necessary, especially for girls, and there was reluctance to approve the cost by the legislature. It would take close to two decades the work of the first four commissioners and three acts by the legislature before the Cayman Island system of primary education was on par with neighboring Jamaica. Radio Cayman's Historical Facts Vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs.
I need a bank that is convenient for me. What do you mean? I need a bank that has easy to find locations and plenty ATMs when I need cash on the go. Oh well, that's easy. You need to bank with Kim National. They have seven customer service centers and 22, I mean 23 ATM locations. The newest one is at the East End Post Office and I hear there's more to come. Well, well, sounds like I need to bank with Kim National Bank, the convenient bank, because they seem to be everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Kim National is everywhere. Surely they are Kim convenient bank. Kim National Bank, we're here for you. Did you hear that Vamped Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice on the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a less than container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load, or LCL, is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Oh, my acid reflux is killing me. Why don't you get something from the grocery store? I need something better than any generic quick fix. You should go to West Bay Pharmacy and have a brief consultation with the pharmacist. I went in last week and within minutes I was back in the car and on the road. And you know what? No more acid reflux. How long did it take you? Minutes. Here, give them a call at 945-0777. West Bay Pharmacy is just around the corner with everything you need in the hours you need it. Visit us today for fast, efficient, and professional service. We are here as a team to assist you while taking care of your health. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. It's big, it's hot, and it's sizzling. Superstitch is making way for Christmas stock and is having a mad end of summer fabric clearance at Superstitch Fabrics on September 27, 28, and 29th. Fabric for dresses, fabric for skirts, fabric for blouses. Superstitch even has fabric to cover your chairs and your what's it not. No mil what's it not. It's the it's biggest, biggest fabric, fabric clearance of the year, of the year so, so don't miss it. 25% off most fabric. 50% off suiting fabric. Great discount on household items. Superstitch, your one-stop household store. At 39 Pasador Place, Smith Road, still offering the best prices in town. Call 949-2833 or go to superstitch.com.ky. The Department of Children and Family Services would like to invite the community to a series of inspiring events recognizing the contributions of our senior citizens throughout October, the Older Persons Month. This year's theme is Respecting the Wisdom and Value of Older Persons. Key events include a church service on Sunday, 30th of September, educational seminars, a beach walk, a variety show, gala, movie trip, and more across all three islands. For a full listing of events, get your copy of the Older Persons Month calendar at public buildings, dcfs at gov.ky, or contact dcfs at 949-0290. System one voted. 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. It is now my pleasure to introduce my special guest this morning, surprise guest, None other than MLA, Mr. Arden McLean, who represents the District of East End in our Legislative Assembly. And why is he surprised? Because two consecutive Fridays he's on there. That hasn't happened in in, in some time. Uh, But you know, uh, he's always willing and raring to go. And uh, whenever he's on, the conversation gets really, really hot. If it's not between the audience and us, it's between me and him. (laughs) Lots to talk about. Some of the topical issues... uh, some of the um, 
issues facing us here in the Cayman Islands, some of the challenges, good challenges in, in, in a way, good to the extent that while the, for instance, the, the cruise berthing uh, facility, it is something that some people say we need, some people are saying that we don't need at the end of the day, um, there may be, we may find a, a, a midway point between needing uh, and not needing, but at the, sa- at the end of the day, we have an opportunity to come to a good conclusion uh, if, we wa- if we want to. Mr. McLean. Good, good morning, morning, sir. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Ossie, and morning to the broader community. Um, before I get into that one, um, let me say uh, that I too want to join with everyone wishing Tidit a happy birthday. Um, I am, I think I'm seriously convinced that were it not for people like Tidit and Ms. Varnisha, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know what I would have been. I do know that my dad had, had us under some serious discipline. So when I look at that, I could look back and say, well, maybe he he um, he um, would have kept us on between the white lines and never crossed the yellow line. However, I must give them credit for for enhancing that which my dad did at home um, for all seven of us. Um, but most people will not know that. Um, there were people like myself who in the early 70s as a young teenager um, brought the first Sculpton Regatta trophy to Cayman when we travel all the way to to um, Grenada, really. That's where the first one was held. People like myself and Donald McLean, Jericho Cornell, but someone that has gone on notice over all these years and and has never been remembered in this scouting moment is Peter Melbourne. People forget the influence he had as well. Peter Melbourne. Um, Peter Melbourne was in the scouts, taught us how to swim, um, and even competed with us mm-hmm. in swimming in the open class in, in Grenada. Do, sailing as well, too. And, and, and sailing. <coughs> and, and people like Jericho Cornell, Carson Ebanks, Donna, Donna McField, um, Dave Ebanks from West Bay. And the other one that we have, uh, we might have forgotten that was very influential um, after Bernice them it was, was Levine. And don't forget uh, Mr. Uh, Oswald Rankin. Yeah, and Oswald, Oswald helped me attain much of my badges by taking us fishing up on Queens Highway when there was no, 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 no Queen, no road up there. We had to hike up there, and that was part of our, our thing to get our, our badges. And who else have we not forgotten so 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 easily? Foga. Martin. Yes, yes, yes. Herbert Martin, yes. Mm-hmm. Hey, I recall as a young kid, I don't know, nine, ten, Foga had a little old angler, and it couldn't start. You had to push it. And when he would come to East End, right where the library is now, and on the other side of the road, that was the school then, and on the other side of the road, it was the annex, where scout meetings used to be held on the beach. And there was a hill. The hill was much steeper than it is there now because they cut it down since. But Foge would park his angler up on top there so that we could push it down the hill to get it started. One of my fondest memories of scouts was that in 1971, when electricity came to East 10, the first day, our Kayla was Bernicia. Mm-hmm. Um, in East Ten. And one of the fondest memories was she kept us out that night when they tur- to see the first street lights come on in East Ten. Wow, wow. Okay? Um, and I, I spoke of that at her funeral. An indelible well. memory, huh? Yeah, that has been etched in my memory ever since because my parents couldn't 
get electricity when it first came to East End. It took us years to get it. Uh, as a matter of fact, it was when I went to to Grenada, my first trip, which you had to go through Jamaica then, you had to stay at the scout headquarters there. And then on the way back, you had to go to Barbados, and we spent <laughs> two days there. Um, and and when I got home, and of course, Bernice had picked us all up. We were in Levine, and when I was walking up to the yard, my two younger brothers ran out, hollering, telling me that we had like Tristan in the house. Wow. <laughs> so I left Cayman, having smoke in my nose all night from them kerosene lamps. lamps. And and my, my brothers running and saying that we had electricity. And that that was some of my great memories in 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 in, in scouting um and Oswald taking us all the way up on the beach and you had to stay the whole weekend to get your badges mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, and and Bonisha and and Tidet and Foga and and all those Oswald they all played a pivotal role in the in our lives in East End and uh, Tidet was up there a week and 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 she was there every week and Miss Clark would come with her as well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and um so I'm indebted to those people um they were part of making me who I am and the principles that I have they 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 they, they played that role and what people have to understand is those persons who are involved in scouting in guiding in the girls brigade they are all volunteer positions, Absolutely. no compensation whatsoever. And you heard uh, Winston speak this morning, 70 years mm-hmm. and, and volunteer and, service. Can you imagine if they had to pay her I mean, um, a, a pension for all of those years that she put in? Yeah, absolutely. You know, can you imagine? And, can and you? that's what I keep saying, O.C., in and we mustn't days. forget the late John Gray, too. You yeah, know. yeah, John, uh, Gray, John Gray was there, too. I can see him in his little white shirt Miss, now. Miss Francis, yeah, Miss Francis, Francis Barton. And you know, the lady there that her father was administrator, um, Miss Hurlston. Miss, uh, uh, Miss Ella Hurlston. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very with, big in With the Gilroy. With yeah. the Gilroy and the guy. Well, yeah. with, within that, that yeah. organization. Mm-hmm. But Sister OC, organization, yeah. Yeah. Well, O.C., let me tell you, I have said this over and often. My life and many of our lives of my generation was guided and, and taught by volunteerism because they believed in their community. It wasn't about money. They thought that they, they knew that was their way of leaving a better world. You know, we talk about leaving a better environment. We have never talked about leaving better Adults for the next world. Mm-hmm. But that's what they believed in. They believed in that. They volunteered. You know, every time we had to go to Queen's birthday parade, right there by where the Legislative Assembly building is now when it was Princess Royal Park. Mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. used to be mm-hmm. held in there. Yep. yep. And, and, and prior to that, it used to be in front of Emsley. That's correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and when I you get into that car with one Isha and get down there, she pull an ear about it one side. Every guard had to be straight. Hunted it. They, they they pick you to pieces to make sure you are presentable. Where do we see that today in making sure our young people coming up have that kind of discipline? Okay, we have to go to the t- top of the top of the hour for our eight o'clock news, uh, folks. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back immediately after the 8 o'clock news with MLA, Mr. Arden McLean. We know we're not talking politics at, at this point in time, and some of you like the conversation that we're having, that we're talking um, uh, as well. So we will continue along those veins, but the politics will come in to play as well. So please stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. Connor. And studio time now by Price Right is a minute after 8. 
Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, everything is priced right at Price Right. Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Your community. News and information. Radio K Man is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio K Man. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. Road safety will be the key focus on the National Roads Authority's upcoming conference. Set to take place over four days in October, NRA's Road Safety Week features a wide array of both local and international speakers. The NRA will host International Road Federation workshops at the conference that will focus on a variety of topics, including road audits and innovative financing mechanisms for road safety. It will also feature a number of local speakers from government entities, private businesses, and nonprofit organizations, including the NRA, the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, the Cayman Islands Insurance Association, and the Cayman Islands Motorcycle Association. The conference is taking place October 1st through the 4th at the Ritz-Carlton. To ensure Cayman stays on top as the safest and most professional diving destination in the world, the Cayman Islands Tourism Association is hosting a water sports safety forum. CETA's project coordinator, Leanna Jarvis. The main approach of this forum is to give uh, the attendees an opportunity to provide uh, feedback in regards to water sports safety. So our moderator for the evening will be Mr. Ken Hyde, who is one of our past presidents. And our panel uh, will be uh, persons from the DCI, RCIPS, Port Authority, and there will be a CITA water sports sector person as well on the panel. The Water Sports Safety Forum takes place Wednesday, October 3rd at the South Sound Civic Center at 7 p.m. For more information, log on to cita.ky slash share our seas. And Literacy Month Storytime at Books and Books continues this Saturday with local author Karen Chin reading H is for Heritage. Senior Operations Manager at Books and Books Simon Watson says they're very keen on supporting literacy in the Cayman Islands. We want to be able to show all, all the young people out there that these are um, that not only is it, is it so important to read, but it's important to be able to look at other people in the community and see what they've done, and, and not only how they love the, the, the books, but also how they've gone on to actually write books of their own. Kids, young and old, are invited to attend tomorrow's event, 1030 at Books and Books in Caymana Bay. It's free and open to the public. In regional news, Sagicor General Insurance has completed an amalgamation with Harmony General Insurance Limited after getting regulatory approval by the Financial Services Commission in Barbados. Keston Howell, president and CEO of Sagicor General Insurance Company, said the move to combine operations with Harmony General, quote, provides the opportunity to expand Sagicor's insurance footprint in Barbados. Commenting on the amalgamation's impact on clients, he added, quote, I welcome our new clients to the Sagicor family. I assure you that this new relationship comes with a commitment from the entire SGI team. All our clients can be assured that they will be provided with the highest levels of service from an experienced team with a knowledge base built over 138 years of operation. A transition team is working on the integration of the operations between the two entities. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC, who will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio k Newsroom. BBC News with Neil Nunes. The president of South Sudan, Salva Kiir, has ordered the release of all prisoners of war and political detainees as part of a peace deal signed last month with the rebel leader, Riek Macha. A number of his fighters and supporters are in detention, along with other critics of Mr Kiir's government. The leaders of Germany and Turkey have agreed to try to improve their strained relationship after talks in Berlin. At a tense news conference, Chancellor Angela Merkel said the two sides had a different concept of free, democratic society, while President Recep Tayyip Erdogan called for the extradition of his opponents living in Germany. The U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to vote today on President Trump's nominee for the Supreme Court. They'll make their choice a day after emotional testimony from the candidate Brett Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford, who has accused him of sexually assaulting her when they were teenagers. India's Supreme Court has ended a centuries-old ban on women entering a revered Hindu temple. It's the latest in a series of rulings on controversial issues. 
There's been a strong reaction to a declaration by the president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, that his only sin was extrajudicial killings. The UN called it extraordinary. Mr. Duterte's spokesman said the president was only being playful. Five people in Ethiopia have been charged with terrorism in connection with what prosecutors say was an attempt to assassinate the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. Two people were killed in a grenade attack in June at a rally in Addis Ababa in support of Mr. Abiy. BBC News. Access. Information. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. Radio you can find us www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. From happy beginnings to happy ever after. Brit K protects your lifestyle with the best insurance cover at the best possible price. Health insurance with far-reaching benefits. 95% of claims settled in five days. Low-cost life insurance. And investments. Security in retirement. With a custodian pension plan. For happy beginnings and a happy ever after. Visit BritK.ky or call 949-8699. Brit K, where people come first. The Tuesday edition of The Business Buzz is brought to you by Grape Tree Cafe. Located in modern town, Grape Tree Cafe is a favorite among locals and visitors alike, serving up delicious Caribbean delights such as fried fish and fritters, fried breadfruit and chicharron, to name a few. Grape Tree Cafe has a reputation for good service, tasty dishes, and generous servings. Telephone 324-5860. Attention Breeze Fusion fans and supporters, registration is now open for the 12th annual Grand Cayman Breeze Fusion 5K Walk Run. We're calling on you to help us in raising funds for the NCBO and for the John Gray High School Musical Department. Registration is only $15 for adults if registered by September 30th. The walk run will take place on Saturday, November 3rd at the Smiths Back in the Air in Grand Cayman. But you must be registered by September 30th to take advantage of the lower fee. Visit caymanactive.com to register today or stop by Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. In financial news, global stocks were mixed today on worries that the Italian government's budget plan would not align with the European Union's wishes for the country to reduce its debt. Keeping score in Europe, France's CAC 40 lost 0.3% to 5,523. Germany's DAX dropped 0.7% to 12,351. The FTSE 100 index in Britain was less than 0.1% lower at 7,542. Wall Street was set for a flat open. Dow futures added less than 0.1% to 26,480. The broader S&P 500 future was also flat at 2,920. Looking at Asia's day, markets rebounded today as strong U.S. economic data supported the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index added 0.3% to 27,788. The Shanghai Composite Index rallied 1.1% to 2,821. In energy, benchmark U.S. crude rose 11 cents to 72.23 per barrel in electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. The contract gained 0.8% on Thursday to close at 72.12. Brent crude used to price international oils at 18 cents to 81.56. It settled at 81.38 per barrel in London. And in currencies, the dollar rose to 113.49 yen from 113.42. The euro weakened to 1.1642 from 1.1658. At Kirk's Home Center, we can make your life much better. We got it all together. We got a great deal to store for you. This September at Kirk Home Center, save on Pratt & Lambert Pro Hide Gold Interior Flat Latex Paint. Five gallons for $99.99. And touch-up details with a three-pack Pro Max paintbrush set for $10.99. Enjoy homemade dinners on a 30-piece white porcelain dinnerware set from Gibson for $31.09. Organize, store away, and declutter with storage totes starting at $12.79. Home Center. The Tuesday and Thursday edition of The Business Buzz is brought to you by Cayman Medical Supplies, providing quality pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, and consumer products to healthcare providers, retailers, and ultimately the patients at a reasonable rate in a friendly, caring, and timely manner. Cayman Medical Supplies is located at number 93 Smith Road, Windward Center. Telephone 949-6211.
Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Brand Source Home Gallery has been appointed the exclusive K Man supplier for Durovit bathroom products. Durovit is the leading international manufacturer of bathroom ceramics, tubs, and showers, recognized around the world for beautiful, functional products. Winner of top industry awards, Durovit collaborates with leading European designers to provide the most elegant and innovative bath products. If you're ready to bring style, comfort, and innovation to your bathroom, visit Brand Source Home Gallery to see the new Durovit showroom and meet the in house. Bath designer. Whether you're planning a functional family bathroom or a personal spa retreat, browse the Durovit collection and be inspired. Brand Source Home Gallery, delivering a new standard in custom designed bathrooms. Brand Source Home Gallery, Dorsey Drive, Industrial Park. Good morning, time now for the latest weather report. Current temperature is 84 degrees, relative humidity is 81%. Barometric pressure 29.95 inches and rising. The wind is east at 9 knots. Overnight low temperature was 79 degrees. Synopsis indicate isolated showers expected mainly this morning with a decrease in the possibility of showers by this evening as a tropical wave moves across the Western Caribbean. Light to moderate winds and slight seas expected over the next 24 hours due to a weak pressure gradient across the Northwest Caribbean. Radar images show isolated showers in and around the Cayman area moving towards the west. The National Hurricane Center is issuing advisories on Tropical Storm Kirk. At last check, was located near 13.2 north, 62.5 west. It's about 110 miles west-southwest of St. Lucia. Kirk is moving west at 12 miles per hour with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. It is expected to weaken to a tropical depression by tomorrow. The system poses no immediate threat to the Cayman Islands. For further information, you can visit www.nhc.noaa.gov. Now the forecast for the Cayman Islands for today, calling for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of morning showers and temperatures will rise to the low 90s. Your winds will be northeast at 10 to 15 knots and seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. Tonight, pretty much the same, partly cloudy skies with a 20% chance of showers and temperatures falling to the upper 70s. Your winds will be east to northeast, 5 to 10 knots, and seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. High tide will be this morning at 11.30, low tide this evening at 5.17, high tide again tonight at a minute after 11. The sun will set this evening at 6.15 and rise tomorrow morning at 6.16. And the outlook is calling for similar weather conditions through Sunday morning. Update after eight is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Good morning, once again. We take a look what's happening on the roads and extra patience needed this morning. As if you're coming from the east, heading to Georgetown, as traffic is steady but flowing, some sections busier than other sections. On the Linford Pearson Highway, traffic steady. Coming off Bobby Thompson Way, steady but flowing traffic, as well as on Hulda Avenue, Thomas Russell Avenue, not looking too bad, moderate flow, as well as Elgin Avenue. Coming from the West Bay, four-way stop, heading to West Bay, moderate flow and light to moderate traffic flow. Coming from the West Bay, four-way stop. In the center of town on downtown Georgetown, Edward Street, moderate flow of traffic in front of the Georgetown Post Office and on Shannon Road, Things aren't looking too bad as traffic is flowing moderately. On the West Bay Road in front of the Ritz, traffic flowing moderately in both directions. And moderate flow of traffic on North Sound Road coming from the Butterfield Roundabout, heading towards the Industrial Park area. Be coming from the Esterly Tibbicks Highway, steady but flowing traffic. Godfrey Nixon Way, moderate flow of traffic. And let's take a look at what's happening on Cool Road. Cool Road traffic is flowing moderately in some sections and other sections steady traffic closer to town that's the very latest on your traffic join us again at about 10 minutes after 12 as we update you on your traffic situation look out for the car in front of you the car in the back of you and share the road cayman islands Mm. excuse me i noticed you from afar Mm. really 
Me? Well, not you. The KFC sandwich you're eating. Oh, Zinger. Sorry, I'm not trying to be funny. No, no, it's it's called the Zinger sandwich. Crunchy, juicy, 100% chicken breast, crisp lettuce, sweet mayo on a seeded bun with a little zing. KFC's chicken is not factory breaded, frozen and refried like the Burger Boys. Customize your KFC Zinger and dip it in barbecue sauce. Wow, now I'm starting to notice you too. KFC, it's finger licking good. It's It's big, big. it's hot, Hot. and it's sizzling. Superstitch is making way for Christmas stock and is having a mad end of summer fabric clearance at Superstitch Fabrics on September 27, 28, and 29th. Fabric for dresses, fabric for skirts, fabric for blouses. Superstitch even has fabric to cover your chairs and your what's it not. No me what's it not. It's the it's biggest, biggest fabric, fabric clearance, clearance of the year, of the so years. don't miss it. 25% off most fabric. 50% off suiting fabric. Great discount on household items. Superstitch, your one-stop household store at 39 Pasador Place, Smith Road. Still offering the best prices in town. Call 949-2833 or go to superstitch.com.ky. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza is back. A winner this November with your Rotary Central Music Extravaganza ticket purchase of only $25. Win that grand prize of $40,000 CI dollars. Second prize, $4,000. Six $1,000 prizes and much, much more. Yes, the 23rd Annual Music Extravaganza, Saturday, November 24th, Royal Palms, West Bay Road from 7 p.m. Featuring music by Dr. Bob's Experiment, Fire Squad, and Altered Minds. Only 8,000 golden tickets now on sale through Rotary Central members and and Rotary ticket sellers. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza proceeds fund over 50 community inspiration projects. You can be a winner. Your ticket. Your chance. Your community. Rotary Central Music Extravaganza is back. Attention Rudy Cayman listeners, don't forget to register for the 12th annual Grand Cayman Breeze Fusion 5K Walk Run. Help us in raising funds for the NCVO and the John Gray High School Musical Department. Registration is only $15 for adults if registered by September 30th. The walk run will take place Saturday, November 3rd at Swiss Bacadere, but you must be registered by September 30th to take advantage of the lower fee. Visit caymanactive.com to register today or stop by here at Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. Cayman Island swimmer Ilana Sinclair won bronze in the 800-meter freestyle and gold in the 5-kilometer open water swim at the Carifta Championships in Kingston, Jamaica earlier this year. She now says that gave her the platform for the success she had in the Foster's IGA 800-meter sea swim on September 8th. Sinclair won the female category while finishing fourth overall. Obviously, Carifta is an amazing and big event and really being able to show myself that I could win the 5k and get bronze in the 800 has really improved my confidence with open water so i think it definitely has set a base for this 800 meter season and all the 800 meter season yet to come up to season in international sport rohit sharma won the toss for india and elected to bowl first against bangladesh today in the asia cup cricket final. Defending champion India will be looking to secure continental bragging rights for the seventh time, while Bangladesh has made it to the Asia Cup final for the third time in the last four editions, but has yet to win. India made five changes to the side that tied their last Super 4 match against Afghanistan. Sharma, Shikhar Dhawan, Bhuvneshar Kumar, Jasput Bumra, and Yuzvendra Shahal were rested for that match, but are all back. Injury-plagued Bangladesh, already without opener Tahim Iqbal and all-rounder Shakib Al-Hassan, made one change to the side that defeated Pakistan, which was virtually a semi-final. Left-arm spinner Nazmul Islam comes in to replace middle-order batsman Momin Al-Haq. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, MLA, Mr. Ard McLean. And of course, as you know, he represents the District of East End in our Legislative Assembly. Uh, Mr. McLean, uh, good morning. Um, we were talking about scouts. Uh, we may want to shift gears a little bit unless there's something else that you uh, remember that you may, may want to talk about. I know you talk about uh, the whistles and... Uh, well, I didn't... Uh, we, we, well, that was off, 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 air, off, off air, air. I was yes, telling uh-huh. you that um, at different stages in, in scouts, you get different types of whistles. And the very first whistle I got, which in them days, they had a wood, the little wood ball in it, you know? Um, 
the very first whistle I had, I got, I still have in, in, in safekeeping. The one that I had on the lanyard when I became a scout leader, um, I lost that somehow, mm -hmm. which was devastating for me. But um, the other thing I was telling you, the kind of respect and control that it still has, even as an adult, sometime this year, last year, late last year, um, I believe it was um, old dad a funeral, I think it was. And I walked in the funeral, didn't didn't recognize, didn't Carcare, see. Carcare? Or, or, or. Old, now old daddy. Um, yeah, old daddy. Now old oh. daddy, his son. Yeah. Carcare. Uh, Car yeah, Car Susan yeah. and father. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And and I was, when I sat down, I didn't see Titit and Miss Clark right behind me. So it had been last year. And I get this tap on my shoulder. And Titit leaned forward and she whispered, behave yourself in here now. This is church. <laughs> I got so frightened I couldn't believe that she was sitting right behind me. You know, But that's that's the kind of respect that scouting brings to, to, to an individual. And I'll forever be indebted to those women who, who, who made sure I stayed between the white lines and never crossed the yellow lines, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that, that carries you far. I mean, when I was went to sea at a very young age, I didn't, I didn't get to finish scouts because I left earlier, but um, um, I didn't get to, quote unquote, retire from scout at the, the usual age, the older age. But when I went to sea, uh, the, those things were etched in my, in my memory. And, um, and like you and I were saying, even as adults, those times have impact on the decisions you make in life. Even at this age that I am, as old as I am, I, I, I still remember those things. And, and those things are, are what will take you through life. And, and I encourage anybody to go into scouts. Um, but the, the key is volunteerism. We don't volunteer anymore. We, we are more concerned with making money and not worried about the next generation. Vernicia and Titit and Oswald and Fogel and all those, they were concerned uh, about the next generation. Miss Clark as well, you know. These were people who were concerned about the next generation. And, and like I said, we talk about leaving a better environment for, for those than, we, than we found. Well, I believe if we leave better adults, <laughs> the environment will take care of itself. They'll be able to continue uh, uh, maintaining the environment, you know. So, um, but be that as it may, now you can move on to whatever you would like to go on to. Okay. D did you attend the, uh, the, the the meeting at the Family Life Center on Wednesday night? No, I, tourism? I, no I didn't. Um, I, uh, oh, see... I made a conscious decision not to go, mm -hmm. um, despite being in invited, for a couple of reasons. Um, on the 25th of July, 2017, right after the election, was our first trip to Cabinet, um, presenting matters relating to our constituencies. And, from a, and we made a decision to submit a one on behalf on from a national perspective by the by the opposition mm -hmm. and one of the things we asked then was for a presentation on the airport and on the on the dock we have made a number of requests since to the minister and i don't think he saw it necessary to to update the opposition they have gone ahead with what they've gone ahead with. And someone may say that this, that is being frivolous and politics. Well, I don't think so. I, I, I think that at the very least, out of respect, um, we should have been uh, made aware of it. When he, he called us and invited us on the tourism development plan, we were all there. We made input. As a result of our input, we, there were a number of things changed. But there was something ominous uh, uh, about not 
allowing us to get a briefing or a presentation on the airport and the and the and the dock. And subsequently you see those two projects have become two of the most controversial subjects in the in the country. Um I did not want to go there and put questions to to the minister. I think that was uh, a relationship he was trying to build between him and the public, which should have been done a long time. Um, so I decided not to go. Um, um, I it would be interesting. I, I doubt it. We'll hear anything of that nature that either one of them will come to ours. Uh, it would be nice to see, because as you well know, we're going as well, and and I think we or see we should make this. I should make this abundantly clear. The the premier said to me the other day, he said, "Arden, you should be ashamed of yourself because you you have always supported the dock, and now you go bring motion about referendum." Mm-hmm. And 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 I said to him, my response to him, and both of them, and. Um, the Minister for Education was, I have never once said I was against the dog. I've never once said that. I believe that there's a case for a dog. I have made suggestions on how we should do that. Um, And those suggestions were to lift it up, take all that property along the waterfront there uh, in the interest of the country, and, and lift it up on pylons, and put it further out. So we do not need, there will be no need for dredging. I believe there's a case to be made for a pier. Our, our, our tourism, that aspect of it, it depends upon it. But they have not made that case. I do not understand why there's a need to have those passenger liners bow right up against the land. I do not understand that. Um, there were a number of questions that I could have asked there Wednesday night that I I didn't if I if 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 I had been in attendance um, that would have put them in an on 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 comfortable position. Um, I really believe that this thing has been a real mess. Um, I think more should have been said to the public. The public should have been better informed. I mean, you know, they have changed, even changed the plans for the dock. Um, and, and, and they have even changed the plans for the dock. And they will not unveil Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That's seriously unfortunate. Yeah, I know we are, we are elected to govern, but, but, and and to uh, to look out f- for the best interests of the country. I I, I appreciate that. Um, but in the same token, a a project of this size that is going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars, the justification for it is insufficient. You you have to understand that we're not the sharpest, the only sh- kid on the block. We have people out there who are very knowledgeable. I heard a young lady stood up there. I watched it from home. I heard a young lady stood up there. I think she was one of the, some of the last that spoke. I don't know who she is. Um, and I heard this young lady stood up there, and you should have heard her deliver herself. And 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 so everybody has their own concerns, um, rightly or wrongly. They have their concerns, and they, they, the government has a responsibility to, at the very least, try to address some of those concerns. Um, I heard things there that night like, well, the silt, you will, it is, has to be controlled by, in the bidding process, they have to prove how they got control the silt, which is true. Um, but there are no guarantees. If you get bad weather while they're dredging that, it is going to wipe out whatever is on the south and north, whichever way that, that tide is going, that wind is going. Those are the type t- things that, those, that's the risk you take with mm-hmm. doing development. However, 
there will always be silt there. You can't raid some place and it's not always silt. It will generate silt forever. And that is going to get suspended. I heard someone there say, one of the the, the panelists say, that if the ship is in um, bow force, then the propellers are in the back. You know, really, you, people shouldn't be listening to that kind of thing or uttering that kind of, of stuff because I don't know if they have even been on, on a ship to see it being maneuvered. You, All my life, that's what I did in my early life. Or oh, see, the propulsion you need to put on that ship to reverse it out from close quarters to keep it straight is, going, is much worse than going forward. Mm-hmm. They need to understand that. Not only that, if that ship is, whilst that ship is alongside the dock, you're, you're using your thrusters to remove it. And that is going to cause turbidity. Then people say, well, why don't you could reduce that by using, uh, using tugs? That's even worse. Tugs, propulsion is not behind, you know, it's underneath. Okay. And it's going to our oh, new new tows. There used to be tows that from behind, and you still got some of those. But if you want an efficient tow, you you put the propulsion underneath, underneath it, where it goes down and it, it turns three hundred and sixty degrees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let, let, let's switch from the from the technical uh, nature of the project more to uh, the practicalities and the um, the 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 whole exercise behind whether or not we should or should not have a, a, a port. The um, op, uh, official opposition has uh, issued a press release in relation to the road show uh, that has taken place. I believe the East End one was um, the date for that has been changed. Yeah, is it? because I was supposed to be away, but I have since canceled that. So so when when will the East End uh, one take place? It'll be the fifteenth. The fifteenth. And uh, the other dates. Um, uh, the first, the scared, first yeah. thing is Tuesday mm-hmm. night at Northside Civic Center, Wednesday, right, Wednesday at Baden Town, and then uh, Thursday, Thursday Savannah, Savannah Primary, yep. s- Primary School. Yes. Then Monday, the eighth of October, West Bay Primary uh, School. Right. And um, on the Tuesday, the ninth of October, South Sound Community. Hall, Georgetown, Wednesday, October 10th, Seafarers Association uh, Meeting Hall. And uh, East End Meeting will be uh, the 15th. The 15th now. Yes. So, yes. so at that point in the time, they say it's scheduled as usual. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, I want you to talk a little bit about, and I, I, I've made this um, comment as well in terms of what the referendum the request for a referendum, what it is designed to do. Do you envisage making any suggestions to the government in terms of how the question should be put to the people, how it should be uh, phrased and everything else? We want to talk about some of those issues when we return. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Are you kidding me? What's wrong? I ran out of my meds and I have an interview in about an hour. Why not call CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy? They'll be able to help. You think so? Absolutely. Their pharmacists are brilliant for fast, efficient and professional service. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. We strive to make your health our concern. We recognize the complexities of pharmaceuticals and the need to personalize your care. That is why we offer personalized one-on-one counseling. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. That's why you need contractors all risk insurance from Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Ensure you're covered in the event of property damage and third-party injury or damage claims during your construction projects. And with Fidelity Insurance Brokers, you can be sure you are getting competitive pricing and superior customer service. Call us today for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Are those new glasses on Will? Yeah, we went to Optical Outlook. Wham, bam, easy exam. (laughs) Finally an exam he could pass. (laughs) 
and we had the glasses the next day. Easiest part of our back-to-school shopping for sure. Book your child's eye exam today at Optical Outlook. Call 746-2020. Save 50% off a complete pair of glasses with any student eye exam. Now extended until September 28th. Come see the difference with Optical Outlook, located in the Caymanian Village. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. It's your time, Cayman Islands. Time to have your say. The Cayman Opposition will be hosting community meetings to discuss the future of Cayman's cruise industry. Get the accurate industry figures and ensure you have your say. Does Cayman lag behind our competitors? What are the complaints from passengers? And are tenders workable? Get the truth and help ensure Cayman's future cruise industry remains bright. Phase 1 of the Opposition Island-wide meetings will take place at 7.30 p.m. on Tuesday, October 2nd, Northside Civic Center. Wednesday, October 3rd, Bottentown Civic Center and Thursday, October 4th, Savannah Primary School Hall. Phase 2 of the district meetings will be scheduled next week. It is your time, Cayman Islands. It is time to have your say. The Cayman Opposition, safeguarding our future. Attention all Cayman Islands Veterans Association, CIVA members. A reminder here that the Cayman Islands Veterans Association, CIVA's annual general meeting, AGM, is scheduled to take place on Saturday, 29th of September at 2 p.m. at the Cayman Islands Seafarers Association Hall on Victory Avenue in Prospect. You need to be there. Following the AGM, a social is scheduled for 4 p.m., which is open to all veterans, especially Cayman veterans who have served in the armed forces of any NATO or British Commonwealth country. Come and enjoy and learn about the Cayman Islands Veterans Association and their work in support of veterans' welfare. For further information, call 916-7755-916-0701 or 916-5317. System one loaded. one 8255 What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. one 534 8255 Waiting to hear from you. For the record, with your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, Emily, uh, Mr. Arden McLean. We're talking about the port, port birthing facility. We're talking uh, about the referendum. Um, the question, once the signatures have been garnered, you have gotten enough signatures, the 25%, to then present to the government to say, here, we have met this threshold. We now want you to initiate our people's initiated referendum, then it has to do, of course, the way that our law is designed, we do not have a permanent referendum law per se. So for every referendum, you, do you have law. to do another, another and that's, law. And that's, that's, that's right. understood. Yes. Because you you don't know what the wording is for the next referendum. Precisely. Or what so you, Precisely. you need to pass it in, in uh, Parliament. And, and the wording is going to be key. <laughs> Absolutely. But you have to understand now, we'll see, that the opposition did not initiate this, re this people-initiated referendum. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we have been blamed for it. Um, the, the, the speaker, in his, in his attack on the people, and I should pause there and say that the premier should be ashamed of himself, his, his political nemesis, he has no join with, and he's out there as the attack dog for, 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 for the government. It's bad enough him attacking the premier's political opponents, but when he take it out on the people, he needs to be put on a leash. The premier needs to get a leash around him. Anyway, it, it is not us. What we said was, we first of all submitted a motion to get um, to, for the government to do a referendum because nobody was getting any information. Long before we learned that some save came in was going to do a people-initiated referendum. Okay. And let's get this out in the air. We met with them 
two young ladies, hadn't met them before, who were spearheading that. And the first thing one of them said, Jern or Kern or something like that. Jern, Jern. Katerina Jern. Jern. She said, we, we don't want to make this political. We don't want you involved in our, in our stuff. Um, and we told them we had already submitted this motion and, and what have you. And, and I made it very clear with her. <laughs> if you don't want to make it political, you just stepped in the political arena, my dear. <laughs> um, but, of course, you know, she was talking in general terms, like the big P, you see. Um, and... When that law, when that government indicated they were not supporting our motion to bring a referendum on this because they thought they, they had done their job and what have you, which is fine, um, we then turned and said, we are going then and put our weight behind the people-initiated referendum since the government is not doing it. So that's how that all came about. So let's not come up here with this thing about us doing it. And the way you were just talking, it's, it, it appears like you were th thinking, if we don't get it, well, I, I take that to be general if it is not arrived right. at yes, yes. or if it's arrived at. Precisely. We right. have one, one caller. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good, good morning, Mr. Moderator. Uh, good morning. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. And good morning to my good friend there, um, MLA, Honorable Arden McLean. Good morning. Um, got a question to ask him, but before I ask him, um, I want you also to know that that he from to Windard and I'm from to Lowood, <laughs> and, and we go we go at it hard, you know, uh -huh. head to head. It's and called then, it's called dialogue and 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 yeah. not hold it against someone yeah. is someone's going to win, someone's going to lose. I mean, you take me to win, or make me tell you, see, and you see, um, for weeks then he tries to avoid me, you know, but then when we do click, we click it right back off like nothing happened. You know, okay. and I think I think that is like he said, dialogue. That's yes. how we should go at things. Precisely, right? And he don't remind me of what I tell him the day the couple of weeks before. I remember we just hit it off. But all right? that and proves that is that okay. I don't hold that a whole whole animosities against people. Yeah, I mean, that also especially that you. Getting, and that proves that you're not getting nothing over me either. I'm mean, getting, and I don't hardly get anything over you. <laughs> but you're not getting nothing over me either. Well, it's a stalemate. All right. Okay. Mr. McLean, what do yeah. you think about, I support, I support Captain Charles 100%. And I'm not saying we shouldn't have a dock, and I'm saying that. I think we should have a dock, and we should have a, a mega yacht um, marina. That's what I think when you got talking about docks. But um, I support Captain Charles' idea of putting it in the northwest part of the North Sound. And I would add that we would do another island for recreational purposes. Um, what do you think about Captain Charles' idea. That's well, what I want to ask. Now, well, I don't, know if you were, I don't know if you were listening to me earlier on, but... Oh, I just jumped in the car. Right, right. No, I was yeah. saying this to see off, 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 off here, I believe, um, with the referendum. The referendum is not a definitive... A, a, the, the petition is not a def, definitive answer on the referendum. They are trying to make it look like that. It is about go and vote. You've got 75 percent left out of those electorate that you can convince. It's about, like how we do an election, go and convince people. Why don't we take it to the North Sound? The North Sound is the perfect spot. I've been all over the world, as you well know, Graham, and, and I've gone into all kinds of ports, Europe, uh, Central, South, North America. It, it, it doesn't matter. I've been there. And in all instances, it is a sheltered port. We know why we went to Georgetown, because our port, our imports and, were, and exports were done in Baden Town, right off Baden Town. But the prevailing winds and the weather, did, it was not conducive to doing it year-round. So we went to Georgetown under the lee of the island. But the North Sound is the perfect place to do it. I, okay. I am no tree hugger. I understand extinction is forever, despite not being a tree hugger. And there Things must be preserved. There's something needs to be preserved for the future. But if you want to stay in the forefront, you're going to lose something. I, I'm telling you, you're going to lose something. I don't know what it is, but you have to mitigate the damages 
and your loss? Um, what, I, what I said um, earlier on during the week on the radio was that that um, the only sort of local scientific evidence that we had was when Captain Charles came up with the idea. He had the people like um, Mr. Bobby Soto and those guys who went into the North Sound and matted, matted the, the floor bottom with little flights and monitored them to see how the, the currents and, and, but Graham, the Graham, and stuff move. And Graham, so, Graham, stick up in there, stick up in there. You know, you and I are around the same age. Try go back in your memory and tell me which place in this country was dredged more than any all others put together. Tell me which one it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look at air. Do you know we have so much dredging in that area that that. What about Mister Mister Mike Simmons? I remember he dredged so far out that you couldn't even see the machine. And he and he working way back in. But, but yeah, Graham, I don't know Graham, if you're so scared about dredging. And the only the only fish now that you can find in the North Sound is in the canals that have been dredged to fourteen and twelve feet. Graham, Graham, you were at my brother's funeral the other morning, and I, I, in in my tribute, I talked and the obituary I talked about Brasler, Pompton, um, Governor's Harbor. And all them, you know, the Brazil one, them, <laughs> them dredges down there that dredge straight out into the north town, you know, mm-hmm. the old boy. Yeah. Caller, caller, we're going to ask you to leave us there. We have to go to pay some bills now. I want to thank you very much again uh, for keeping that side of the conversation going as well. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. A pharmacy is where you go for medicine and for the pharmacist's advice on how to take them. Here at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, our pharmacists are trusted health professionals whose job is to help people receive the best results out of their medicine. They know exactly what's in your prescriptions and will be happy to answer any of your questions. You can be sure that our pharmacists will see that your medicine is at the right strength, in the right dose, and will check that you yourself know how to take them or use them properly. Come in today for a consultation with our pharmacist at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, where we care about your health. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Hi, I'm thinking of buying a car from the States. Which port do you ship out of? Hi, we ship out of Miami, Houston, and Brooklyn. Just let us know your port of choice and we can provide you with a quotation and answer any questions you may have on insuring and protecting your vehicle during its journey. Shipping shore to shore, Did you hear that Vamped Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice on the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. CUC advises customers in the Pedro Castle Road area in Savannah that they will experience interruptions to their electrical service on Saturday, September 29th between 8.30 a.m. and 6 p.m. Areas affected include all customers on Pedro Castle Road from the junction with Shamrock Road, including Homestead Crescent from the United Church East to Domino's, Astral Way, Sandy Ground Drive from the junction with Pedro Castle Road to House Number 134, West Lane, Adams Lane, Charity Lane, Pedro Villas Lane, and all side roads. Houses 1742. 1803, 1828, and the Church of God Full Gospel Hall on Shamrock Road will also be affected. Motorists are asked to drive with caution when utilizing Pedro Castle Road as CUC will have a number of vehicles and personnel in this area. CUC apologizes for this interruption, which is necessary to upgrade lines and poles in the area. For more information on the outage and streets affected, please contact CUC's customer service team at 949-5200 or email service at cuc.ky. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orrit Connor, continues right now on Radio Cayman.
morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me this morning, Emily, uh, Mr. Arden uh, McLean. So our last caller talked about the, the, the North Sound um, proposal or his, uh, his preference, sorry, uh, for the North Sound area. But let, let's get back to the, to the whole issue of referendum because that is, that, that is still up in the air. Uh, we haven't reached it yet. I, I haven't heard, I, I think on uh, Sterling Drain's show yesterday, there were representatives of uh, those who are uh, moving the request for the referendum forward. I haven't heard, and uh, just that I haven't heard, I'm not saying that it is not out there, where are they as far as getting the required number of signatures and ver- verifying them. Because the longer that takes, right, uh, the longer everything else will take to develop. The longer that takes may also demonstrate certain inherent difficulties that they may be having in getting the required number of signatures as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, and it may, it may dip. Yeah, but you can't, you can't tie one one scenario in now we'll see it could also be that they're not managing it properly and getting around to the people too. So, you know, let's let's be fair to all sides now. Well, if, um, they're not, if they're not managing it properly, that's not sending a, a, a good message. This is the same volunteer to, 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 thing we'll see they, they, that we not, talked about. They're not, okay. sending the, they, they're not sending a good message then to the people that they want to get out there and support them. If they you know, can't demonstrate their ability to manage this part of it, then hey 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 well OC, I mean obviously you 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 have to give people the opportunity to, to convince people and and getting a ref a, a people initiated referendum maybe we need to set that look bar a little lower um, to twenty uh, percent fifteen I don't know because it it, it but. The reason it was set at twenty five is you were you were there oh, part yes, of it, yes, yes. so that we don't have these things every week. E- exactly, every week Precisely. you would have somebody doing because it. Because remember, what it says now uh, uh, something of national importance. Well, what an is issue, of greater national of, importance than that? Of no, greater? but but that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why you couldn't just go willy nilly and and choose any you know anything for uh, people initiated referendum without you know if you didn't set it at that twenty five percent. Well, and and you see the the. the <laughs> the funny thing, if I can you say that, the funny thing about this is that government is reluctant, from what I've seen, to to say if they'll support a uh, uh, people initiated referendum. Listen to me, you see, if if the government was so convinced that what they were doing is right and the people should have their say, and they were convinced that the majority of the people of this country wants that dog, then they should welcome a referendum and, and, and put it to the people. Let the people decide. But obviously government does not view it in that manner. They feel like they were, they were elected to govern mm-hmm. and they should govern without, without, without hindrance. Well, that's not how governance goes. You, you know, in, 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 in the mandate or the, the, the right you are given by the people to, to govern them and manage them and control them, they must also be consulted. Okay. They must also be consulted on major matters, particularly those that are going to go in to, to forever. Okay. We have one caller, but when we come return from that caller, I'm going to put a hard question to you in relation to the roads projects that you undertook and the port project now, why we need a referendum for one, but we didn't need a referendum for the other. Folks, please stay tuned. We're going to our phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, uh, Mr. O.C. Good morning and good morning to Emily and Mr. Arden McLean. Good morning. Good morning, morning, sir. It was very important that he was on there this morning. I hope everyone is listening to all he said. It was words of wisdom about um, the pier and um, our dock, if you want to call it. Uh, 
and um, the dredging in the North Zone, because when I mentioned it, I was criticized and lambasted. We did a lot. As you said, no more dredging has been done anywhere in Cayman and even. Mm-hmm. Well, the next, the next part, Mickey, is South Sound, you remember? when? Oh, are you, yeah, yeah, it's right okay. there. But and you I remember who did that? To the extent, yes, yes. Um, you know, to the extent that um, North Town and the amount of trees and that have been taken down and land filled in, artificial lakes and seas. Was, and um, one of the man's famous chief engineers was on the dredging was with the dredging there, Mr. Lewin Miller from North Side. Mm-hmm. I've been pretty sure he was on engineers on the, the dredges there, the uh, Matalan company was. And um, the, the thing is this, just as you said, we're going to have to sacrifice something, but in a small island like this, Grand Cayman, the major um, one that's been concerned with the, with the port and with the different um, aspects of it is it's going to happen. We know that. The thing is to mitigate as much as possible. But what you said about the sound, it's not today that's been saying that we could put um, sort of a safe harbor in there for, for, for bigger ships. I remember there was a offer made by Mr. Ludwig I think in the early 1970s to cut across where Red Bay would be, where the, I mean, where the, um, that, um, what's the name of that, um, the Red Bay Plaza there, uh, early days. I think it was about here to cut right across there and they put a draw bridge. Uh, do you remember that? Oh, seriously, McLean? Yes, sir. Yes, I, I Yes, I, I, he had made that offer that he would do it. That was obviously for bigger ships to come in. One road, I guess. And um, the the thing with it, and I just asked a question about the referendum. The thing with um, with it is this: that many young people, because I listen to a lot of the young voices, and I realize they might be in their twenties or thirties, even forties. They they wouldn't remember very much about these things, as and um, they might be at the forefront of all this. And they, it's a very different Cayman. No, for us, my my age and so forth, it's completely different. And um, for us to grasp, we are talking with them, and at the same time, we are trying to give them our. And we, 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 I do it every day. My job, trying to tell people about the Cayman that was, and we know it can never be again, and all that. It's sad for me, but that's the way it is. It can never be that way again, and they don't know about that again. I went into a restaurant the other day and it is so stark to me. 16, 17 people were in there and everyone was on their cell phone. Tick, 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 as the only person I felt, you know, <laughs> almost uncomfortable. So <laughs> I, I began to laugh at the situation. What is this what we have become? But that's the generation now. That's what's to come and it will be more so it's a very different in personal world. We only get personal when we can um, go at each other's throats, I guess. Mm-hmm. And um, you're right, it is. Um, she has entered, they have entered the world of politics with this because it is bringing one side against the other. It doesn't matter how you want to look at it, good or bad. What I'd like to know is this, because there seems to be a great confusion with this, and it might be simple to answer, mm-hmm. But I just ask this and hang up and listen. If we do have the referendum, it's a national referendum, we realize that, like mm-hmm. the general election. Very quickly, call her. Um, wouldn't the people have to vote in the polling stations of your electoral we, district? I, I think we, we answered that already for you, caller, uh, uh, before. Yes, sir. Yes, they will vote at the traditional voting areas. Each constituency, they, they will vote that way. No, uh, That's the voting system that's in place now, caller. Thank you very much. We have to go to our headline news. Folks, please stay, please stay tuned. For the record, we'll be back shortly. Radio K-Man. Radio K-Man's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now. 
Local and international road safety experts will be at the Ritz next week as the National Roads Authority hosts a four-day conference. The infrastructure minister says the conference is timely as the NRA has been working to improve the safety of local road networks, which going forward, quote, must be innovative considering Cayman's small size. The first vote by a U.S. Senate committee is due over the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. It follows dramatic testimony by Judge Kavanaugh and Christine Blasey Ford, who's accused him of sexual assault. Professor Ford, close to tears, described the alleged 1982 attack in detail, saying it had, quote, drastically affected her life. Judge Kavanaugh angrily denied he assaulted her. A passenger aircraft has come down in a lagoon off Chuuk International Airport in Micronesia after it missed the runway. The Air Nguini plane from Papua New Guinea was seen sitting in the shallow water just off the coast. Locals responded by approaching the plane in small vessels to help rescue the 36 passengers and 11 crew. A hospital official told Reuters that four passengers were in serious condition after the crash. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. Uh, in the studio with me this morning, I'm LA Mr. Art McLean. Just again, uh, for the benefit of our last caller who asked that question in relation to a referendum and a regular election, the referendum will be run along the same lines as a general election. If, for instance, the quarterly updating of the voters registration, uh, voters list takes place during that period, it, 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 it will happen. It will happen during that period. You have to make provisions for absentee voting uh-huh. unless, unless there are amendments to the election law to accommodate all of this. And people will tell you, people will say, no, you don't want to do it then because people then have to become familiar with the new rules and you don't want to do that in the middle of a referendum. So you have to make provisions for absentee voting. You have to make provisions for mobile voting. Mm -hmm. You can't say there's going to be one central voting area for Georgetown. You couldn't couldn't accommodate You you, you have to do all of the constituencies uh, the same way. I don't see it costing any more than a general election. If anything, it would probably cost less less than a general election. And you pointed out off the air that, for instance, the ballot papers, there's going to be one ballot paper yeah. uh, wherever. You know, you, you, you're, not to, separated, to you're not going to separate it by electoral district of East End. It's one referendum, but you would know how much was cast in East End, how much was cast exactly. in Georgetown, and what have because you. Because they're going to vote in their constituency. Exactly. I, uh, but I heard the minister for tourism, the, tourism say that it got cost upward of $2 million. You know, we, we need to stop these scare tactics that, that the government is now using, you know. Most, if you listen to me, you need to stop this now. But could it be factoring the fact that, you know, what it's going to cost in terms of um, campaigning and ads and, 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 and that's, that doesn't count the side uh, that, is, uh, um, well, that, is, that is in oppos- opposition to the government's position as well? well, well because we, I spoke about that the other day. You're going to have to find uh, wh- whomever it is. They're going to have to find their own funding. They may call upon the government and say, well, listen, you have all the resources behind you. To um to support yours, we need support um as well. That well, is OC, not likely to be forthcoming. Oh, see, look at me. Listen to me. The government has a large ass. Mm-hmm. Okay. We, the opposition, in getting our job done, you see the little ads we go to see, and the, we're using flyers to go around with, because we're taking it out of our own pocket. I watch that meeting which should not have had to be the one on Wednesday night, if the government had been doing their job, they wouldn't have to pay for TV for up until 12 o'clock at night. You think we can afford that, O.C.? 
They can't afford that. Government has the largest. No, I'm not saying that they shouldn't use it to to convince the people that this is the right way to go. I'm I'm not saying no. But I'm saying to you, they have the largest. They can go out and convince the people that this is right. But what I saw there on Wednesday night, OC, I am very concerned. People are angry. And if, if that they were not consulted. And you talk about, when we come back, we were going to talk about the roads. Yes, that I yes, yes. I want, and that's a good segue into that. How much yeah. consultation was done on the roads? The, the consultation was done long before I, before I, before I, I became a minister. Remember that. Gilbert McLean, in his infinite wisdom, and I thought it was a good one, <laughs> he went and gazetted those roads, roadways before I became a minister, mm-hmm. while his, during his tenure. Mm-hmm. So that was gazetted. You had all the time to object and what have you and the landowners mm-hmm. and, and what have you. But the mere fact that it's gazetted doesn't mean that you still have to go through with it. No, no, it, it, it doesn't. But it, you, you look at it and you see the necessity for it. And you, you, you make the people know. Some things you see in politics, like those roads, people were were eager to get them roads for, to alleviate the, their traffic woes. Mm-hmm. Some, some things. And some people are eager to get the, uh, the birthing facility. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now, look at what I did. When part of that road development to alleviate the traffic was going through the, the forest, forest. Mm-hmm. there were a number of ways we could have done it, gone up against the wall or, 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 or other Kirke assisted me. I met many times with Kirke. Kirkland Nixon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Late Kirk. We moved out all of the ghost orchids out of there so he could take them up to his place. So they did not the botanic run the... Park. Yeah, Botanic Park. Not his spouse, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, his... It, that's, he, why, that's why I made His baby that, up yeah. at <laughs> Botanic Park. And so that there, there was no potential of them getting damaged. Then the people in South Sound went up in arms. So I held a meeting at the Basel Johnson Hall at the UCCI. And they, they were angry. Mm-hmm. They were angry, O.C. And so after they expressed themselves, I got up and I told them, I said, you know, I ain't going to be angry with you. You don't want this road. That's fine by me. I have other things to do in governance of the country and yourselves, I will go and get the rest of those things done and leave that. When I had done a study showing that if that road was put through there, we would have had a lot of, we would have alleviated the traffic even more. Um, and we brought in people to do that. And, and you know, they made models and stuff like that. And, and, when I said to them, when I am sitting in traffic, many of you are going to be there. So we'll then take a stab at trying to get this road done. May not be during my time, but at some stage, we're going to have to do something with turning Walker's Road into a three-lane um, uh, thoroughfare where you can the cars going into the schools are, are not holding up the rest of the traffic. That was all part of that plan. Um, so the part that the people objected to, I had to listen, or see, And that's what you have to do. Now, we made an alternate plan to show them that we could go up against the bluff, but it was going to cost us a million dollars more, which I, didn't, I hadn't elected for at first. It may be my fault. But when we looked at it, it was going to be a, another little over a million dollars. And we presented that to them, and they still didn't want it. So what, what am I to do? Okay. But, but, but in the case of the, of the wording on the referendum, if, I, if it was me, if this referendum becomes a reality, i.e. 25% of the signatures, the, the, the signatures um, of the electorate, I think the, the question should be should be worded in such a way that it it says, um, "Do you support the dock as currently proposed?" 
as currently proposed, mm-hmm. and get the vote on that. Okay. I mean, uh, because there's, like I say, there's a case to be made to be made mm-hmm. for a dock. I mean, a peer, for peers. But- I don't know if that's two or one. You know, I said to the deputy premier uh, when we were last in, in le- the legislature, I said, well, bring it down to one. And then later on, we build another. But we want the Cadillac from the word go. You, what It has to be more palatable to our people to say we're going to build one dock and then in the future... If the need arises, we build another. Okay. We have one caller uh, who's returned uh, with us. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning again, gentlemen. Good morning again, sir. Morning. Just to say thank you for clearing up that matter because, believe me, Mm -hmm. it's causing a lot of confusion and misunderstanding out there. I was lambasted on a radio station yesterday for saying that, that I didn't know what I was saying and so forth, and that's one of the chief proponents of the petition saying that. <laughs> this is the point I'm trying to make, that we need to say, and what you said about what the referendum should say, I also ask that. What do they think since they're bringing a petition? What do they think mm-hmm. it should say? And you made a very good point, because I understand it will be binding, and if we just say no or yes to this, we we need to sort of qualify what we are saying, and and you know and say well at a future date or something we can do so and so. But if we just come out with a plain um, no to it, mm-hmm. then uh, no to it, then that is binding on the next government, so to speak. As far as I understand, you understand a lot more about that than I do, gentlemen. They'll be bound to honour that answer. Thank you very much for saying this. I hope those people are listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, I, I, you, you know, O.C., in, in, in all of my goings and comments and discussions on this doc, I've never heard one person say that I'm a doc. Everybody is saying we're not against the crew's birth and pairs. <laughs> we have to ensure we, we get Cruise, our cruise tourism, tourism is important to this country. Mm-hmm. But there, there, there are but, so but many no, mutations of this. There are some people who say we also don't want it done at the Georgetown Harbor. Oh, there are well, people who, who are saying we don't want it done there either. How do you accommodate all of these various tastes? I that, never heard that, that and though. flavors, uh, requests for flavors that people that well, people some have. Some decision has to be made. And 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 that and, and and knowing that when we make that decision, there are consequences from it. Exactly. That flows from exactly. it. Exactly. The government needs to make that decision. Mm-hmm. If the majority of the people, quote unquote, do not want that dock in Georgetown, like Graham called up, it alternates what mm-hmm. whatever. If the majority of the people of this country say they do not want the dock placed in Georgetown, and the government goes ahead with it, they know the risk. The election is around the corner. Mm-hmm. Those are all the risks you take into consideration. Yeah. Despite, even the, you know that it's in the best interest of the country, like Barclay Bush did, like, yeah. like Warren them did with the LA and the yeah. glass. I, I don't think it's a house. big risk simply because... The birthing facilities, they're already there. They are already there. So I don't think that that's a huge, huge risk in but deciding OC, that we're going to keep them there. Oh, see, let us go back to 1976, if you will recall. Not one retained their seat. Yeah, that's true. So the risk is there. But a lot of people here don't know anything mm-hmm. about 1976 mm-hmm. either. Mm-hmm. And, but we're we, we sure as hell... But if you're happy that they did what they did in terms of building it now. <laughs> and we will be right in the middle of building it. Yes. So the sore will be oozing during that time. Okay, we have to take a commercial break, folks. The conversation with Emily, Mr. Arden McLean will continue right after this short commercial break. 
Did you hear that Vant Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice in the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a less than container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load, or LCL, is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. At Healthcare Pharmacy, they know you're busy. That's why they're making it even more convenient to refill and pick up your prescriptions. Everyone knows about the amazing service at Healthcare Pharmacy Grand Harbor. But did you know that Healthcare Pharmacy in Governor Square is now open and available for those who work and live in West Bay, Seven Mile Beach, or Snug Harbor? And even better, you can click on healthcarepharmacy.ky and refill and transfer prescriptions online and pick up at either location. Healthcare Pharmacy Grand Harbor and their newest location, Healthcare Pharmacy Governor Square. Now more convenient than ever. Healthcarepharmacy.ky. Initiating system. For information that matters. For the record with Orrit Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I'm your host, Art Connor, in the studio with me this morning, MLA, Mr. Art McLean. Uh, talking about consequences, I'm going to divert just very quickly. Um, we saw um, a lot of people were glued to their television sets yesterday uh, watching the Senate uh, Judicial Committee hearing on uh, the Kavanaugh nomination. My belief is that that the government is going to push it through. I think they're going to get the votes mm-hmm. that they need in the committee. They're going to go out uh, to the whole Senate. They're going to get the votes that they need. They may pay for it. Absolutely. Uh, later They'll on. Touch. But, but they, 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 they have decided you got to that what they seek to gain at this point in time is more important than the consequences that they may suffer uh, later Absolutely. as well. And, so and the, government uh, here, the government here can do the same thing. You know, look at, look at um, now, now I just got a text say that Flake say he's going to support the, the support, going to vote for, for him, for the judge. You, 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 if, you, if you believe that something is right in politics, you believe this is going to, 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 to enhance the lives of your people, and you believe strongly in that, you should not be concerned about your re-election. Do it. You know in the long run the people are going to see the benefit of it. But this government cannot, in all fairness, say that that is true with the configuration that they are proposing out there. They cannot say that because the number of questions that are being asked, legitimate questions, despite, I see some of those young ladies there the other night. I don't even know if they, they went on the boat around here. But they understand basic stuff <clears throat> about turbidity and they are concerned about it. And you need to, not only do you have to mitigate what is going to happen out there, you have to mitigate the concerns in people's mind. It's their future. 
one little young lady got up there and said something about what's going to happen 40 years from now when people like the ministers all go on six feet deep. And she's right. I don't know. She, I don't know. She might have been in her late teens or something. She's the one and her children are going to have to pay for whatever damage we do now, you know. And 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 you have to concern yourself, O C, with those kind of concerns by the public. Because they are looking into the future. Let us not just stop here at the at the expense of our people, because in their minds it's at their expense. Whether we talk about it, we not having to pay for it. And I, I hear that baloney going around here that the people won't have to pay for it. Really? Really? You mean tell me there are philanthropists out there now that come in here, dump for two, three hundred million dollars in our com- community? No, see, on the, need, the government needs to stop that one now too, you know. Because, oh, see, when those passenger liners come here, every passenger pay a premium to come to the country. So where that money is, who you think paying for it? Mm-hmm. That's our money, whether you say $5 go to the, what's the name? The, the, the tenders. Mm-hmm. And um, it go to, to the dock to pay for, for their loans. That money, if we didn't have paid that, how we got paid that loan if we don't get that money? So that is our money. And the country is paying for it. If we weren't paying that loan, that would be in our reserve. It is still with us. We need to stop this, you know. Okay, we have one caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hey, good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Oh, see how are you? I'm fine, and yourself? Yeah, boy, Thanks. you see that bad man a couple of days ago? You see he's down, he's a taxi driver. Come on, do stuff on our corn, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm on a plane, make this as brief as possible, how many times it's almost an, an art, honey, you just be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> see, um, you know, we do need a dog, but please, not how exciting. I don't know if you ever get the hot side day when you were a kid. Oh, yes, uh, quite often. Only The only day that I couldn't go was on Sundays. My mother would not allow me to go out there to swim on Sundays. I had to go to church and then Sunday school in the evenings. Well, you know my experience with Hogside Bay. You remember the, the church hall that was where the dock is now? The school, the school. The school. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was up on stilts. I used to have to go there for scouts. And titit you carry us out in Hogside Bay Bay, you know, in the evening after mm-hmm. we did scouting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead, caller. Yes, um, I just want to say that, um, you know, I went to that meeting, and the questions that were so important, I really felt, and I know that we don't, they don't get the correct answers that we want for them, but I'll leave that alone here. We're going to work on I'm looking forward to um, the other meeting that's going to be going on in the district. And I just want to say that um, at Sports Talk, which I'm going to right now, they opened that up when it was doing the um, running for election, um, probably almost two years ago. And I just want to say nothing has been done to support stock from the open that up down there. It is a disgrace to see the condition that beach is in. And it's drawing so much visitors from the whole island. I've been there and see people from Wisconsin come down to the People from Morristown people come down to Rum Point and elsewhere. And they're doing nothing to fix up Sports Beach. So, guys. Thank you very much, caller. We have two more callers. We're going to make those the two final calls for the show today. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Morning, OC. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Morning, Mr. McLean. Morning, morning, morning. Good, good. I'm going to ask you a question. Who's Flake? That's the senator. Jack, uh, Jeff Flake. Jeff Flake. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, senator yeah, yeah. for uh, um, Arizona. Republican. Oh, that's where he's from. Okay. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, in the context that we were talking, then it was about OC saying, "Look, glued to that thing up there." And I, I said, "I just received a text saying Flake saying he was going yeah. to vote for him because he was one of those yeah. that was on the board." He's not running for re-election. He's already decided that he's not running for re-election, and just reported in the news that he he, he is going to vote for the president's nominee. 
Good. Anyway, we'll just leave that alone now for now. Um, I hear you all debating this, the port now. Let's go back to the port. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying, the majority are saying that they are not against the port, but they don't want it in Georgetown. I would like to know if they know that the port been in Georgetown <laughs> over the last hundred years. Yes. No, and no. that's where the Caymanians choose to have that port. I think the people should get behind the government and encourage them to improve our facilities. We are a country that has grown over the last four to five years, and our infrastructures are being left behind. Because every time you try to do an, an improvement on any infrastructure, the roads, they always complain. They're always complaining. So uh, there's a group that's saying they're not against support, but they don't want it in Georgetown. Now, where else are they going to put it? You can't put it in the North Sound because that is, woo, you, they will crucify you for, for the North Sound. You uh, can't put it in Red Bay anymore because there's too many lawyers and doctors and whatever have built their homes there now, and you'll be looking for a lawsuit against planning approval there. So we already have an existing port. Let's we improve it. And about, I don't, you see the problem with me or the thing about me? I don't wear my emotions on my shoulder. And I don't mix my emotions with, with, with issues like that. I save my emotions for my God, my family, and my friends when they're sick or when they pass away. That's what I do with my emotions. I but, think most, most of this is all about emotions. But you see, you see, you, 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 you are bringing emotions to follow me now. You're saying, wow, no way in the North, no way in the North Sound. That's emotion. You have some affinity to the North Sound. That's emotion. So, but you need to tell me, the two places in this country that has been dredged most. Number North one, no, yeah, number one, North already. Sound, and number two is South Sound. So, you know, we, we, we need to look at it from a, a, a non-emotional perspective, yes. Mr. McLean, I agree with you. I am not emotional about the front North Sound. I would rather to go in the North Sound. I am just telling you, repeating to you, that the people will crucify you if you put it in the North Sound. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant by that. Me, I never emotion over these things. Okay. And it sounds like they got to crucify someone for putting it down. Too. <laughs> so Carl, we don't know where go. Caller, I'm, I'm going to ask you to leave us there. We have about three minutes and I need to accommodate the other caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Arden, Mr. Ossie. Good morning. morning. Just, just a quick, from what I've been hearing all this talk, right, that the, everybody is for a port. It's just the location. I was on one that the northwest part of the north sound. It seems as if there would be more agreement for that by the environmentalists, the divers, and the master mariners, were the three main groups that know what they're talking about. And I think it's just most in a rough sketch of what the pair would be like in the north sound. Of anywhere in the island is going to have some effect on the environment. But I think dredging a big open area there will have the least effect on the environment. We're going to lose some. And we're going to lose some. And then we have a vast area in West Bay there for development of the barkers and up on that side. So if someone put a sketch of what could be done up there and maybe people vote whether they want it there or Georgetown, I think the fine majority of people would agree to having it there in our town. That's your opinions on that, these gentlemen. Thank you very Thanks. much, caller, for that. It uh, becomes complicated when you give people choices on a referendum. Yeah. It becomes complicated. It's either yes or no on a particular project. Uh, but I think the government, if the referendum is, is the petition is successful, to call for a referendum, I think that the government should should word that question and give themselves a leeway out, a, a, a door, door out, it should be worded and say, do you support the, the peers as currently proposed? Because we need the peers, but I think most people are saying that you're going to, there are too, there, there's too much, there will be too much environmental damage as proposed. And I believe that is the driving factor behind opposition to the stock. 
I believe that if we put that up on stilts, and that is still my view, and when CG was there, I see you can ask CG. I told him the same thing. I told him my thoughts on doing a deep yacht pier, uh, a, a big yacht pier out there as well. You heard Graham say that, O.C. Um, I told him to go then, build a little half moon there down by, a little further there by, uh, by, by Red Spot. People on these big yachts, not going to go up in the North Sound that they were proposing to put them in, they want to show their yachts off. And, and you can put a, a nice place there. And, 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 and my thoughts were, build it up on stilts. The, the amount of um, environmental damage out there, it will be minimal because you can bring in those, those um, pylon places and they go, they, you, you, you put those, you anchor those with spuds and, and they drill that, drill that and fill it up with concrete and, and, and steel at the same time, reinforcement bar, and, and they come right out of the water. So the footprint of the of of the of uh, destruction will be little of nothing. Go out, put it up on it, and the, of course the ships will have to will have to be um, moored, um, tied up against the dock, much further away. So then you use those those little carts like what you use at Disney World. And you're constantly driving in and out, and, and, and people people may want to use it as exercise to get off the boat and walk in, or you, you, you just keep bringing them in and out. Mm-hmm. And the water is always flowing underneath it. It, 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 it. I do not, I believe we need to explore that possibility. I'm not saying that that's the right one, but I believe we need to explore that possibility because, you know, you know, use a dock if you go, uh, I don't know, they're, they're probably about two, three feet um, swells um, in town that they would those passenger liners would not tie up because that's not one of the speedboats we got here. But what I'm seeing here on this new proposed plan is that they have reorient they have reoriented the the dock now, different degrees, and they they're still digging out up against the George Sound dock. Where the bow of the ship is going to go, I don't. I don't like that. I really don't, for for a couple of reasons. But one of those main reasons is that we're not operating a speedboat, and we somewhat happen to believe you have to have sufficient clearance. You are not using tugs that can 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 help stop that boat, and you're not going to stop that boat with just props. Was that Belize or Honduras? Honduras, it was. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't yes. know. Yes. Okay. You, you, you can't just stop that ship. I mean, that ship is. I don't know how much tonnage it is. Two, two hundred fifty thousand tons. I was on one of two hundred and sixty-five thousand, and it took thirty miles to stop it from full of hit to full of full of storm. You, 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 you don't, you don't just stop that. You know that that's any standby time and stop. A lot of momentum. Well, Mr. McLean, we've reached. But I'm not point saying in they show. In they're at full speed. No, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Please, uh, you know, I'm just using that as a reference as to the maneuverabilities of, of these ships. They, they slow down hours yeah. out. <laughs> okay. want to thank you, Mr. McLean, for being here today and uh, for such a uh, very good conversation with me as well as uh, my audience. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles, as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to remind you that we are brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who's less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity, because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support your radio station, Radio Cayman. Join Sterling Drain E-Mines at 1215 for talk today, and as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. 
For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealerships serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Shaken yet standing firm. This is Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands.